for one. Good morning. I keep shaking my little table. Good morning, good morning, good morning. My nose doesn't start itching until I hit that live button. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Brittany, good morning. Good morning. Tanisha, hi. Hearts. Red hearts. Hello. Tanisha, how's the weather? Good morning, Tabitha. Thank you for joining. <laughs> 51 degrees with a high. Well, of 51 here in Nashville, Tennessee. Shower possible early, cloudy, early, becoming mostly clear at the midnight. <laughs> Low 43 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds northwest at 10 to 20 miles per hour. I love it. <laughs> Are you a meteorologist? Seems like it. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Trina. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for joining. Hey, I don't have any of my stuff. Hey, Vanessa. Like, I just came here, like, sit down. I don't have anything. I guess we're just going to talk today. I'm just kidding. Good morning. Share the video. Red hearts. All right. Red hearts. Hi, Regina. Love you. Hi, Delisa. Love you, sis. Hi, Karen. Hi, Sharon. Good morning, Sheila. What y'all love too? Tell me the weather. Hi, Sandra. What's everybody up to this morning? Hi, Sadidra. Awesome. 558. Good morning, Joyce. Bless you. Hi, Lisa. How's the weather in Dallas? Okay. Hit the red hearts. Y'all already doing it. Y'all like way cool. It's Friday. Already. Praise God. Hi, Keisha. Classmate, how you doing? Hi, Ronica. Oh, Ronica said you're going to have the weather one day. Well, just get ready for Monday. <laughs> Hi, Brian. Bless you. 49 degrees in Ramy. Yeah, it's cold here today. I had to put on a, a t-shirt under my shirt because it's, it's nippy here. Okay, y'all. Let's go ahead and go into our first round of prayer. We're going to be in Esther. Um, I'm going to read Esther 3, 1 through 5, and 12 today. Where's my pink book, Britt? You see it? Esther 1 through 5 and 12. Thank you. Good morning, Cousin Atlanta. Good morning, everybody. Okay, let's go in and tell the Lord thank you for this morning. Father, we thank you this morning. It's Friday. We're so thankful that you've brought us to another week together of just coming before your throne. Every single morning, the warrior nation cried out, Abba, Father, you're our daddy. And we just love you. We reverence you. We bless you. We magnify you, Father. We had a thousand tongues. We could not begin to thank you enough for just how good you are. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for delivering us. Thank you for sending Jesus to save us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that guides us into all truth. We just bless your name this morning. There is none like you. You have no rivals. You have no equals. There are no comparisons. We thank you for just breathing new air into our lungs today. Thank you for keeping us safe through the night. Thank you for providing for us day after day after day after day. Father, thank you for protecting us from instigators, from those who keep their mouths running 90 miles per hour. Father, thank you for just being with us, even in that, even when people speak evil against us. Thank you, Father, that you still protect us and that your perfect will is still done in our lives. How we honor you for this day. Holy Spirit, teach us. A fresh word from the throne room. We thank you for this morning. Our hearts are hungry and thirsty for more and more of you and who you are. Father, we thank you that today should be filled with miracles, signs, and wonders. Blessed moments, happy times, good news, pleasant phone calls, Father, deliverance, doors that you are opening, acceptance letters, promotions. Lord, we thank you for financial breakthroughs, anonymous givings. Father, we thank you today. I thank you, Father. We are next in line for a miracle. We just thank you today for the healings that will take place today. We thank you, Father. Just, just do more than we can ask or imagine. That is your word, and we thank you for this morning. Bless our time together. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. Good morning, warriors. Six on the dot. Okay. That is so funny how that always, my other phone was like so delayed. <sighs> Y'all ready for the weather forecast? Good morning, Adrian. Adrian, so we're going through all of these t-shirt orders. And Adrian, when I get to your stuff, you have this beautiful profile picture set up on the website. You're beautiful, honey. Thank you. I was like, she took the time to put her picture in the box, in the circle. And it's a beautiful picture. Thank you. And CC, Angel CC, thank you for all the stuff you ordered. Bless you. Thank you, everybody. So here's the shirt. Um, here's the girls version of the shirt. Um, yeah, so I have the guys or not the guys, but the unisex version yesterday. This is the girls version today. Brittany's going to post that link. Make sure you guys grab your t-shirts. We're getting them shipped out. Um, please don't wait till the last minute. We don't want to be trying to fly to Ada and 
chip out t-shirts at the same time so please grab your shirt and there's some other shirts on there too love you guys very much okay weather forecast right now in jackson mississippi it is 50 degrees it's cold that's cold for me high of 71 the winds are coming out of the west at nine miles per hour uh sunny skies today uh, sunrise at 6 10 a.m and sunset at 7 44 p.m if today's your birthday happy happy birthday please share this video warriors i love you very much thank you for all the hundreds of you who just shared this video you all are awesome so i told you i had a little treat for you today and um our treat is tabitha <laughs> um she came over this morning it's always a treat to see tabitha and to hear tabitha and to worship with tabitha you hear she can pumped up now so uh i'm gonna shift the camera we're gonna worship a little bit and then we're gonna go into this message today which we call instigators and you'll find out why in a, just a few minutes hit the share button let's send um tabitha some love this morning type in something sweet to tabitha and i'm gonna shift this camera and we're gonna worship for just a moment i love you y'all are awesome i know cousin Atlanta. i saw your shirt order girl you're gonna get your shirt <laughs> you're gonna get your shirt everybody's gonna get their shirt all right, Brittany. Brittany gonna make me stand up. Y'all gonna see all my closet. And thank you for somebody. I got this butterfly. I got so much stuff, y'all. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You gotta adjust it. Good. Hey, JJ, good morning. Good morning. talk about the song because otherwise they'll give away your message <laughs> you can tell so i'm just i'm just gonna start <laughs> singing because <laughs> i didn't prepare anything to say and i almost told it and then i was like tablet probably wants to tell it herself just tell me that well the the name of the song is called do it again by elevation worship and i just love it because it talks about how god fights our, our, our battles and he is always on our side like every time we see the victory and then the next time we'll go into a struggle and we forget that he's already won so if he's done it one time he'll do it again that's why i love this song i love it too we're gonna sing it in ada <laughs>
Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness I'm still in your hands And this is my confidence You've never failed me yet And I'll never will forget <laughs> okay, boys, I'm ready. <laughs> you so funny, Tabitha. <laughs> Praise God. That was awesome. Y'all know I could have stayed right there. I didn't have to do anything else. Man, I really want to try to get into this. But let me, I was thinking when she was playing. And that's actually what my, my message is going to be similar to that, too, later on when we go to Ada. Just... That God would do it. Like we've seen him do it before. I just when I heard that song, I just I just it just really blessed me. I was like, I love that song. We have to do that song in Ada because it just speaks volumes. It's like we've seen God do it before. He's going to do it again. And last night, y'all know I got one week before I graduate. And I had to put on concealer this morning so you can't see the bags under my eyes. And when I was up late last night and I was working on my paper, I'm doing a paper on faith and science. And I've just had the hardest time getting this paper to flow. And I was like, Lord, when you bring me out of this class, I know it's going to be your grace because I've never really struggled to write anything ever. And I've just had a really difficult struggle with writing this paper. And it was late last night. And of course, I had to get up like three o'clock in the morning. And God was like, I'm not going to fail you. <laughs> I'm not going to fail you. Like, I see what you're doing and you're doing this for me and for my people. And I'm not going to fail you. It's like, haven't I done it before? How many times have you graduated? And it's not that I'm afraid I'm not going to graduate. I have a 4.0, y'all. So I don't want you to think I'm not going to pass, but I just feel the opposition and I feel the struggle. And it's like in these times that we feel weak and I feel like even that my gift of writing, that grace that I have to write, I can't even feel that right now. And But the word says that in our weaknesses, that's when his power is manifested. That's when we're made strong. And so whatever you're going through today, I just want to encourage you that he's done it before. He will do it again. We're going to jump in really quickly. I'm not going to take long. Um, as we've been studying Esther, Esther's my one of my favorite books of the Bible. Just type it in, Lord. I believe you do it again. I've seen you do it, and I believe you will do it again. Tab, thank you. That was so totally, totally awesome. We love you, Tabby. Um, that song really just blessed my heart. So let's jump in really quick to Esther 3, uh, 1 through 5, and then 12. And we named it Instigators for a particular reason. And I want you guys to be encouraged this morning that no matter what is going on around you, that God, he still got you. He's still protecting you. And no weapon formed against you is going to prosper. So, um, of course, we're studying about Esther. And so beginning at 1, it says, Sometime later, King Xerxes promoted Haman son of Hamadatha, the Agite, over all the other nobles, making him the most powerful official in the empire. All the king's officials would bow down before Haman to show him respect whenever he passed by, for so the king had commanded. But Mordecai, remember Mordecai was Esther's cousin, but raised her as his own child, adopted her, um, and so kind of like her father slash cousin. But Mordecai refused to bow down or show him respect. Then the palace officials, okay, y'all, here it is. Then the palace officials at the king's gate asked Mordecai, why are you disobeying the king's command? They spoke to him day after day, but still he refused to comply with the order. So they spoke to Haman about this to see if he would tolerate Mordecai's conduct since Mordecai had told them he was a Jew. When Haman saw that Mordecai would not bow down or show him respect, 
he was filled with rage. He had learned of Mordecai's nationality, so he decided it was not enough to lay hands on Mordecai alone. Instead, he looked for a way to destroy all the Jews throughout the entire empire of Xerxes, dropping down to 12. So on April 17th, the king's secretaries were summoned and a decree was written exactly as Haman dictated. It was sent to the king's highest officers, the governors of the respective provinces and the nobles of each province in their own scripts and languages. The decree was written in the name of King Xerxes and sealed with the king's signet ring. I'm going down, I'm going to go down. Dispatchers were sent by swift messengers into all the provinces of the empire, giving the order that all Jews young and old, including women and children, must be killed, slaughtered, and annihilated on a single day. This was scheduled to happen on March 7th of the next year. The property of the Jews will be given to those who kill them. And I'm going to go ahead and finish it out. A copy of this decree was issued as law in every province and proclaimed to all the people so they will be ready to do their duty on the appointed day. And then in 15, at the king's command, the decree went out by swift messengers and it was also proclaimed in the fortress of susa then the king and haman sat down to drink but the city of susa fell into confusion it's amazing to me how your enemies they think they got you in the bag like so much so that they can issue a death decree for you and then chill out and have a drink together and laugh and talk and it's amazing how the enemy uh if you're not careful you'll almost be convinced that the enemy is going to win like like this plan that they have so um, that they've executed this plan that they have to execute the Jews. Like, Haman thinks this is, like, really going to go down on March 7th of the following year, um, which would have been in the 12th year of King Xerxes' reign, five years into the marriage of Queen Esther and King Xerxes. So what I wanted to point out is that Haman, for whatever reason, gained favor with King Xerxes. Like, we don't know why. I mean, he wasn't a, a good guy. He wasn't a noble man. He hadn't done anything spectacular. Um, but he was believed to be, have been born into, like, royalty, born as a prince. And so I don't know if that has something to do with it or not. But, you know, when people are in great positions of leadership, they don't have to give an explanation to you for why they choose somebody or why they like somebody or why they use somebody. Nevertheless, they chose, King Xerxes chose Haman and put him in this high, high position above everybody else. And then he ordered everybody else to, like, bow down to this guy, uh, to respect and reverence him anytime they saw him pass by. So everybody else around... When they see this guy coming, they're bowing down and paying reverence. And Mordecai was like, I am not doing that. I am a Jew. I believe in God. God is who I bow down to. God is who I reverence. God is who I worship. And I'm not compromised. I don't care who you are. I'm not going to bow down to you. And so he got away with it for a while. It's always somebody in your business. Because as we read, so some of the other nobles, the other officials at the gates started to come to Mordecai and say, you know, man, why won't you bow down to Haman? Like, what's up with that? Every day they started coming to him. Why won't you bow down? Why won't you bow down? He's like, I'm, I'm a Jew. I just can't do that. I, I can't disrespect my God like that by bowing down and reverencing a mortal man. I just cannot do it. They kept coming out day after day, instigators, day after day. Why won't you bow down? Why won't you bow down? And then finally, when they realized he wasn't going to budge, they go to Haman themselves. Yo, uh, Mordecai, you know, the Jew, he won't bow down to you. Like, what you going to do about it? Do you see how they were not mind their business? Like, he wasn't bowing down. He hadn't been bowing down for a while. They come to him and try to get him to conform to what they want him to do. When he says no, they keep coming. He says no. He says no. And then finally say, you know what? We're just going to go to Haman. Like, what business was it of theirs if he didn't want to bow down to Haman? Haman wasn't saying anything about it. King Xerxes wasn't saying anything about it. It's just these, these people around looking in um, at his life and saying, why won't he bow and everybody else is bowing? And they get nosy. And they decide to go and uh, talk to Haman themselves. And it's like, like Tab was saying, stay in your own lane type thing i'm just gonna mind my own business i am going to mind my own business i'm trying to do it in my own life like when i see stuff and i could be nosy when i realize that i'm almost being nosy or if i am being nosy, like you're just being nosy you need to mind your own business kelly and get out of other folks business and let god deal with them and let god deal with me and it's like no nope, they want to be nosy and because they were nosy and because they were instigators, they almost got an entire nation of people murdered because they couldn't shut their mouths and mind their own business. And so they go to Haman. They do this. Haman goes to the king. So uh, Haman's got the king like around his pinky finger, y'all. Like for whatever reason, it's like if he says it, king's like, bet, here's my ring. You can do whatever you want to do. So he goes to the king. He presents the Jews as like these terrible, horrific people. These these stray people, these unnamed people, there's a certain group of people here. Like, just really 
didn't present them right. And it is very important how you present, how people present you. But they didn't, he didn't present him right on purpose because he wants the king to agree for him to, to kill them. So he doesn't, he does not present them right. And the king basically says, you know what? Do whatever you think is good. He didn't say execute him. He just tells Haman, do whatever you think is good. Here's my ring. Uh, basically saying that whatever you do, you have my ring to say that you have my full support. Basically, he had the, his, the kingdom in his hands. Haman did. So he decides to cast lots to decide. He's so excited. Isn't that a shame? He's just excited. That not only can he kill Mordecai, he's going to kill all the Jews. And so he cast lots for a special day for this to happen. And look at God. God... <laughs> When they cast the lots, it's for a whole year out, like March 7th of the next year. And I thought that was like so cool that they, he cast these lots and it wasn't like tomorrow. It was like an entire year. And it's like in that time, so God was able to move and protect and give them a strategy. And it's like, I don't care what you may sink you up against today. I don't care who's in your business or running their mouth and trying to start trouble in your life. Y'all, yeah, God will still block it. He will block the plots and plans of the enemy every single time. And he's never, ever, ever a moment late. Never. So it was set for March the 7th. The issue the decree went out. They were, It went out swiftly. It's funny how the enemy will run and try to destroy you. He will hurry and try to destroy you. It goes out swiftly. And, of course, everybody goes into confusion and disappointment, except for the king and Haman. They're chilling and they're drinking. And it's proposed that... Haman had him drinking on purpose so he couldn't come to himself and realize what was going on while all the decrees and everything were being issued out. But I just wanted to emphasize the fact that there are people out there who are going to purposely try to destroy you. There are people who are going to get in your business. Like maybe you're on your job and you're minding your business, doing whatever, and somebody else is running to your boss about you. I've had that happen to me plenty of times. Somebody else is running to your boss about you. You're minding your business and somebody's in your business and running and trying to tell something on you. But in the end, just know that God is going to give you the victory. He's already promised us the victory. I don't know. I just want to share this before we go into prayer. And this is personal, but I'm going to share it anyway because I just kept thinking about how God gave them a whole year um, to just have a strategy for him to vindicate the Jewish nation. And sometimes we feel like God is not moving on time. Like, because that's a year. So a year is good when somebody is trying to kill you. So you have like a whole year to say, okay, I'm going to get executed next year. Like, I don't know how you handle that in your mind, but at least it's not tomorrow. But what about when you really need God to move like right now or tomorrow and it seems like it's taking until next year? And I just wanted to say that God always steps in on time. Uh, I remember one time I went through an IRS audit. So anybody been through one of those, you know that's not fun at all. And oh, I was just horrified, y'all. I was just like, <laughs> poor Brittany. Brittany tried to help me. We were struggling. And one of the things they said that I owe, they said I owe a significant amount of money. And one of the things that they said I owe was something that I really was not responsible for. It was like a $60,000 debt that I should not have been responsible for. And they counted as an extra $60,000 on my income. And they had sent me, you know, everything I needed. And they said if I didn't pay, they were going to put a lien, a levy against my credit or tax, you know, a tax levy or whatever. And so I first I was just going to take it laying down. I was just going to try to pay these folks for going about my business. Because, you know, you really don't want to hang out with the IRS. But then another part of it was like, Kelly, appeal it. Because you know you don't owe that, and God knows that you don't owe that. And I know anything about an appeal, but I did an appeal, and so I got a court date. And so I, I can't remember exactly when I was supposed to go to court, but I was supposed to go to court to appeal this. And I was like, Lord, I know I don't owe this money. You, I'm just going to trust you. And so I was supposed to go to court on a Tuesday morning at 8 o'clock. And on a Monday evening at 4.45, I had a missed call from the tax office. And when I called back, they told me that they had found what they needed and they had dropped my case. So that was 15 minutes before they closed and less than 24 hours before I had to go to court and God vindicated me. And it's like, when I come up against things now, I've seen him do it. He did it then. He'll do it now. He'll do the same thing for you. So I just wanted to share that with you this morning that he really does vindicate us. He really does give us the victory. I don't care who's running their mouth. I don't care who's trying to be a tattletale. I don't care who's trying to destroy you. Know that if he did it before, he'll do it again. And people who run their mouths and talk about you and try to destroy you while you're loving Jesus, God has a special reward for those people. 
So I just pray that encourages you this morning. Just wanted to be honest with you and share that. Be sure to share this video. Let's go into prayer. Father, we thank you this morning for being so wonderful. Thank you, Father, that you do things for us over and over. You bring us out over and over. You deliver us over and over. You're always on time. You're never a moment too late. And we thank you for this morning. We thank you that the plots and plans of our enemies will never prevail. We thank you that every mouth that is speaking negatively against us, we thank you that you're silencing those lips this morning. And God, we even pray that you would touch their hearts and soften their hearts and turn those people who want to destroy us into service of yours, into those who love you and are devoted to you. Father, we thank you that Mordecai didn't bow down. He's shown us in scripture that we don't have to bow down and we will not bow down to any form of idol worship. You are our God and you are God alone. It is to you and you alone that we reverence and honor and give glory to Father. So we thank you this morning for this clear example in scripture that when we stand up for what is right and when we are not ashamed of the gospel, you will give us victory. So we thank you for that word this morning. I ask you now to go before the prayer warriors and make every rugged path smooth, every crooked place straight and please Father, bring every high place low. Thank you that they are out of the reach of their enemies. I thank you for it this morning. And as we go out into this world, Father, that's dark and perilous, I thank you that we can armor up with the better truth around our waist, with the helmet of salvation. I don't care how difficult it may seem. I don't care what deadlines we are up against. We trust you today. We trust that you will always step in on time and that your grace, it is indeed sufficient and it will carry us through whatever season we are in at this moment. And we thank you for it this morning. Father, we wear the breastplate of righteousness, sandals of peace. We carry that shield of faith with a prayer warriors. We're the warrior nation. We pray boldly before your throne every single morning. And we know that our prayers are not just chatter. We know that our prayers are changing the world. We know that our prayers are moving your heart and it is causing a response from heaven. We thank you for that this morning. And oh, for your precious word, which is the soul of the spirit, Lord, just carve it on our hearts. Let it be imprinted there that we will not sin against you, Father. We thank you. We want to do what is right, what is pleasing, what is pure, and what is holy in your sight. Father, every prayer request that has come in today, be sure to type in your request. Father, we just thank you that you're seeing these petitions as they come in and you are answering in a way that will bring you the most glory and honor and as we always pray for our precious children that we're praying for God we thank you for Avery's life we thank you for Jordan's life God we thank you that you're restoring them I don't care what it looks like we've seen you do it you've done it before you will do it again Father we thank you for Shania thank you that you're killing her body we thank you for little London and baby Gabriel Lord and baby Tonto and Mariah Grace we thank you that Mariah Grace she will have that surgery she will have all that she needs every drop of that money that is needed to have this surgery it will come in father we thank you that it's coming in provision from the north the south the east and the west and we thank you that these children will go on and live happy and healthy lives filled with every good thing and father for the life of monica sykes lord that her death was not in vain we know and we trust that you will vindicate her death and that justice will be served and we thank you for that mantle that rests upon regina sykes and her family strengthen their hands for the fight father we thank you for this morning you're a good and perfect father please be with the warriors this weekend while we're away from one another. Be with them. Remind them of how much you love them, Father. And just bring us back here together safely again on Monday morning. We bless your name, God. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah and amen. I love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Love y'all. Um, don't forget to get your shirt. I love these shirts. Don't talk about me if I start wearing them every day. I really like them. I love y'all. Share the video. I'm going to miss y'all this weekend. Pray for me. I'm still trying to finish my stuff for school. And it's intense, but I know y'all are praying for me. So thank you. And um, I'll see you guys on Monday morning. Have a wonderful weekend. Today is going to be an amazingly great day. Praise God. Amen. So DJ Ultrasound will be normal in Jesus' name.